I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Courts Outside Off Podcast. Once again, I'm Joshua Hoff. As always, welcome by the one and only man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. It is Angel Ortega. A lot of stuff to talk about this week. Obviously, UC Vegas 61 going down on Saturday. Bells are true. 85 went down last Friday. Obviously, Bells are also having a card this weekend as well. As well as a bunch of news to go over before we get into all of that. As always, we are brought to you by Rogue Energy. If you want 10% off your order at RogueEnergy.com, use the code SOUNDOFF at checkout. That's code SOUNDOFF at checkout for 10% off of all your energy needs. Uh, I went on vacation last week. You know what I had with me? My Rogue Energy Shaker bottle. I was running everywhere, doing tons of tons of things, tons of stuff, and uh, I was really getting tired. But guess what? I had my energy. I was fueled up. I was caffeinated. I was all good. And you can be as well. RogueEnergy.com, code SOUNDOFF, 10% off. This Saturday night, uh, from UC Apex, which will be empty, by the way, in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, a women's strawweight main event, main event, uh, overall, man, I feel like normally women don't get too many main events if they're not like a title fight or a number one contenders fight. This is actually a pretty solid, in my opinion, a women's strawweight fight between two middle of the pack contenders, Mackenzie Dern and Yan Xiaonan. Mackenzie Dern, obviously, a rising star in this weight class, uh, 29, 29 years young, won uh, five of her last six fights, that one loss being a fight of the night loss to Marina Rodriguez last October. She rebounded with a split decision winner with Tisha Torres in April, and now she is facing Yan Xiaonan, who's lost two fights in a row, getting a brutal match up here. Um, I, they both acknowledged that they won't get a title shot with a win. That's what they both said anyway. I actually kind of disagree. I think that if either one of them gets a huge win, they could be right next in line. Uh, but as far as the fight goes, man, what do you think? And what do you think the stakes are on this one? It's hard. I think I think they are definitely pushing here to potentially be in in a title shot position, right? Obviously, like right there. Uh, matchup wise, though, it's 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 interesting, right? I think with Mackenzie, the big thing is is like, look, Fujitsu's great, right? Like that's undoubtedly a fact at this point. We we're all aware of that. Her big thing is getting to fight down to the ground. And we've seen that be the issue. I mean, in her last fight against, uh, oh, my God, the Brazilian gal, I would skip uh, her name is. Uh, Marin Rodriguez. Yeah. You know, she, we saw that when the fight hit the ground, it was good. But the issue was she couldn't get it back there. Mm-hmm. And I think with her, and look, the good thing we've noticed is she's starting to get a little bit more comfortable with her striking. Obviously, it's not clean. It's not there. It's not perfect. But. It's uh, at least she's getting some more confidence. She's continue to build up that confidence, so that way she can set up takedowns. And she needs to create a. And she needs to learn a variety of takedowns. She'll you know, be able to threaten different ways. And if not, not also just trying to get a double leg and take her down. But on the top, uh, as far as like putting her up against the cage, working her, working a takedown through the cage, or throwing it through a toss or whatever, just a, another way that's just you know not just trying to get her down there in, in, in some commotion. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh. And for her counterpart, I mean, look, she's she's good on the feet, strong on the ground though, and it's something we've seen out of that whole, let's say the whole Asian region as a whole, and not even necessarily we're not going to out just China, even though Japan is, has a lot of strong jiu-jitsu players, you've seen that a lot of good guys come out of there, but specifically the Chinese fighters, you know, and I know I was trying to say all Asia, but I guess I will have to target the Chinese fighters. We see that when it comes to the ground and. And, and mainly wrestling, jujitsu. You know, we could make an argument for. There's a weakness. You know, outside of Wei Li, we've seen her. You know, kind of start improving in those parts and be able to do some stuff. Because, uh, and she already had some capabilities there, but we saw that she had trouble when she would get controlled and get put on her back. Uh, so she has something to work on there. But yeah, I think when, if the fight sits the ground, it, it greatly favors uh Mackenzie, obviously, I think we know that. If it stays on the feet, I think it's going to be Yon's fight. But the thing is, Mackenzie struggles against the fight there. And it's, it, and, and, uh, if I, uh, unless we have something different in this fight and, and we see something in the training camp, I don't think it's going to be a good time for her on the feet, especially if she can't take, uh, uh, Yan Jan down. Uh, mm-hmm. 
she's going to struggle a lot, and she's going to get uh, touched up on the feet and uh, get hit with a variety of strikes that are going to be a lot and overwhelming for her. I mean, she can't just have – can't be throwing that overhand right constantly and hoping it lands and then hoping to get a takedown off that. Mm-hmm. She needs to be setting up more. Mm-hmm. I agree. But in terms of matchups, I do disagree a little bit. I do think that this is actually a matchup that is very um, – beneficial to Mackenzie Dern. How about that? I think in terms of getting the fight to the mat, that's always been her biggest issue. Obviously, once she gets it there, she's a monster. She's arguably She has arguably the best jiu-jitsu in the entire UFC, men or women. Like, she's a savage on the mat. But honestly, I really don't even think she really needs to get the fight there, honestly. I think even she could just possibly hit a trip. She could get the fight into the clinch and find something. She didn't even get Tisha Torres out of the mat and nearly ripped her arm off with a fucking, you know, like a um, Kimura. I think this is, uh, and on the mat, I also think that, like, Xianon probably has a wrestling advantage, but jiu-jitsu-wise, it's not even a contest. I think Mackenzie Dern's gonna big, gonna get a big win here. I think probably be a submission. And here's my bold prediction. I think she gets a title shot next, actually, with the win. Um, she said, like, during media day yesterday, that she's like, yeah, I don't think I'll get one. The division's stacked right now, yada, yada, yada. I don't think she realizes just how close she is. Like, Marine Rodriguez is there, but it's pretty clear they have zero interest in giving her a title shot. I mean, For Marina some Hodriguez, reason, which is she, weird. Yeah, she's beat, she what, seven fights in a row or something, and she's like... And she's entertaining. She's not boring. No, I mean, she's had some really, really fun fights recently. She's had a like, lot of, a lot, and I mean a lot of decisions, but she is capable of finishing fights. It's just, yeah, yeah she, she's not, that doesn't get them often. <laughs> Okay, so she's not won seven fights in a row. I was way off on that. But she's won four in a row. The lost one to the champ. Was a split uh, as far as then. She's beaten He Boss by knockout, Waterson by decision, Dern by decision, which is a fight of the night, and Xiaonan on by decision, which is a split. And she's going to fight Amanda Limos in November. I don't think even if Marina Hodriguez wins that one, she's going to get a title shot. It's pretty clear they have zero interest in pushing her. I get it. She's like 36. But like, I think Mackenzie Dream gets a win here, and I think she gets a title shot. But the way that you're speaking, it seems like you don't necessarily agree. Do you think she gets the win on Saturday? Uh, I'm going to go Yon Sean out, man. I'm going to go odds. I'm going to split it here. Hmm. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, in the co-main event, this is really supposed to be uh, Sadiq Youssef versus, um, oh, my God, Giga Chikadze. That fight ended up being scrapped. Uh, Giga ended up having to pull out. Sadiq's now on the uh, – He's on the main card still. He's fighting Don Shanus, who is a USC newcomer. Um, what an opportunity, guy. though, right? Yeah, good opportunity for him. But now in the co-main event spot, is just honestly kind of a banger up at welterweight. Neither one of these guys are ranked, but uh, fighting style-wise, they're both very entertaining, and they could arguably be ranked. Francisco Trinaldo, 44 years young, somehow riding a two-fight winning streak, has won five of his last six. And that shredded. one loss is to Muslim Salikov back in June 2021, taking on Randy Brown, who has looked as good as ever. Um, huge for the weight class, obviously 6'3", riding a three-fight winning streak. Uh, BK, last was uh, in action, beat Chaos Williams in May. This is a solid fight up at 170, man. What do you think? I love it, man. I, I think this is going to be action. Uh, potential fight of the night. I think multiple potential fight of the night, too. Even, even the main, uh, you know, I'll even argue the main fight. Uh, but for Randy Brown and Francisco Ronaldo, man, I mean, 44 years old, man. I mean, eventually it has to end, right? I mean, but I mean, Yurel Romero is still fighting. Uh, fucking Glover Teixeira won a title. I mean, who the fuck am I to judge anybody or age anybody out of any any kind of success, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna go Randy Brown. I'm gonna go Randy Brown. He actually, impre- I, dude, I didn't think that chaos fight was gonna go the way it did. I thought chaos was gonna go out there and actually knock him out. Originally. Really. Yeah. yeah, I thought Chaos was going to win that. He actually surprised me in that. But he's got a nice little one streak going there. Jared Gooden, uh, Axel Oliveira, and uh, potentially Francisco Trinaldo here this weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I think this is a uh, super interesting fight. I think this is one that Trinaldo can absolutely win. But I got to agree, man. Randy Brown's a guy that um, he's 32, so we shouldn't – I mean, you don't really think of a guy peaking at 32. That seems to be what's happening here, man. I mean, his last – won five of his last six. That one loss, a really entertaining fight with Luke back in August 2020. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go same here, man. I'm going to go ahead and take Randy Brown to get the win. I think he's looked great as of late, 
And uh, Toronto can absolutely pull this one off. I mean, at, at, at this point, we probably should stop doubting him. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go and take Randy Brown, man. Um, rest of the card, though, not huge on names. I feel like there's a story for a lot of fight nights recently, but not huge on names in terms of, like, pure fights. A couple of bangers in here, man. Which ones are you most looking forward to? I think one down, man. Uh, Ronnie Barcelo's uh, uh, Trevin Jones. Look, you look at Trevin Jones' record, you know, 13-8, and eight, not the prettiest on paper. But man, can that guy fucking fight? I mean, when he wins, he gets finished as man, and they're, uh, they're sick. And if not, he'll get finished too in the process, and or and or take a lot of damage. I mean, mm-hmm. he, that guy comes out here to bang. You know, I think that's the one important thing. And dangerous for Barcelos, man. You never know. I mean, it's MMA, man. Anything could happen. He's thirty-five, and he's running into losing streak. Victor Henry, Timur Violet, both tough ass dudes. Banger of a fight. I man, what the fuck? I completely forgot that Victor Henry fight was this year. Fight of the year contender, in my yeah. opinion. I no, mean, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean that that I mean right there, potential fight of the night written right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, dude. I mean that is that is an excellent fight right there. Um, <clears throat> arguably the best fight on the main card in terms of action, but uh, yeah, man. We shout out Sadiq Yusuf. That's gonna be. I mean, no offense to Don Shanks, but you're essentially walking into the fucking lion's den if you're fighting Sadiq Yusuf in your first UFC fight. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, man, that should be fun on the main card. John Castagna, uh, is gonna be back. He's riding a two fight winning streak. Knocked out Eddie Wyland, beat Miles Johns. He's looked good as of late taking on Daniel Santos. That's a catch rate up at 140. They did not announce why, but it is gonna be a catch rate. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, also returning is Mike Davis. Apparently gonna be opening up the card against Vasha Borishev. Banger <clears throat> right there, right? I mean, someone's bound to get finished in that. 100%, 100%. Um, the prelims though, I think the prelims, like, the Battle of the Boomers, dude. Battle of the Boomers. I mean, let's just get straight into that one. Alexei Olenek, who secured his, what, 60th win? Beautiful. Earlier yeah. this year, in Beautiful. April. Uh, taking on Alir Latifi. Dude, Alir Latifi, you don't think about it. He's been out of action for a long time. He's been out since June 2021. Before that, he took off a year and a half. Um, very interesting fight up at heavyweight. I think this one's going to be, honestly, probably a banger. 45 years old, Olenek taking on the 39-year-old Latifi. For some reason, I thought Latifi was a lot older. Um, also on the undercard, Jessica Panay is back, taking on Tabitha Ricci. Should be a banger there. I mean, you know. Um, Christoph Jotko, Brendan Allen, very surprised that one's not on the main card. That, that, that is so weird. I feel like those guys deserve to be on the main card. Yeah, I assume so, especially considering it's like they're both – they're not – I don't think either one of them are ranked in middleweight, but they could both very easily be ranked. And Brendan Allen – Two fight winning streak, four of his last five. Christoph Jocko, uh, two fight winning streak, five of his last six. I mean, it's just kind of bizarre that that one's on the prelims, but you know, um, it is what it is. But uh, also on the prelims, uh, Guido Canetti, who is he's another he's another boomer. Um, he's forty two. He uh, last time out, he knocked out Chris Mutino. And uh, he's going to take on Randy Costa. That is going to be a yeah. He knocked he knocked Chris Martinez out of the UFC, dude. Yeah, he did. Randy Costa. I'm I'm, I'm a fan of that kid, man. Um, he's taking on Adrian Yanez and Tony Kelly. He's lost his last two, but yeah, that should be a banger of a fight right there, man. Any, any fights that may have missed, dude. Nate, these two names I haven't heard of her, Maxine Grishin and Felipe Lenz, dude. I feel like I haven't heard those names in an eternity. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Felipe Lenz fought earlier this year, but he had taken a two year layoff. Fought in 2020 twice, Arlovski and Bozer. I felt like I felt like this was just I, I completely forgot that he was in the UFC. Yeah, and I, kinda, dude. And honestly, I, and I, for, and I forgot he fought this year. Same with Maxine Grisham, dude. He's fucking 38 years old, and he fought William Knight earlier this year. Must have just hit my head, but he's still around, man. Still, still getting fights. Both, both guys from the PFL, little PFL and PFL action right there. Yeah, I didn't. I honestly forgot he's in the UC, but uh, yeah, good job highlighting that one, man. Um, <clears throat> should be should be a fun card overall on Saturday. Um, but there's more MMA this week. Before we actually get into that, we got to go back to last week because Bellator was in Dublin, and to be quite honest, man, they should just make this their new home. I mean, at least like they should go more there more often at the very least. I mean, they're gonna um, go back. They're, 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 they are. They are. I don't know when, but they're gonna go back soonish. Um, I think it's just a start of next year, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I love that they are going to Dublin again because both the 285, 
from the three arena in Dublin, Ireland last Friday was a banger of a card, dude. I mean, super fun. And in the main event, <clears throat> Benson Henderson taking on Peter Queeley again. The love they give Peter Queeley, man, the, the Ireland, uh, Irish people, it's awesome to see. It really is. Uh, but sadly, that amazing walkout was essentially all that went right for him on Friday. Uh, Benson Henderson, just a vintage performance. Despite the fact that he's, what, 38 now? I mean, he looked damn good. Uh, ends up winning by unanimous decision scorecards being 49-45, 49-45, 49-45. He lost a uh, point in round two for a low blow. Uh, that's the only real miscue that he had. Uh, dude, Benson Henderson, 38 years old, two-fight winning streak. Um, I thought he would get a title shot, to be honest with you, after this win. But uh, it looks like, which well, we'll talk about later in the show, looks like that's not going to be the case. But as far as the performance goes, what do you think about his uh, her, his performance and what could possibly be next one? It was good. It was solid. I mean, it, it was as good as it could be, I think, for a guy his age and the, the, the caliber fighter he was against. Obviously, we, we, we would have loved to see seen a finish. But he, he got it rolling quick, man. Uh, definitely that uh, low blow kind of changed the pace of the fight, though, because it seemed like Peter had started off really good as far as, like, pacing-wise. He, he, you know, he, he wanted to go. He was going forward. He was doing his thing. And then... That after the low blow, it just wasn't the same pacing out of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, man. I mean, Benson Anderson, he's kind of interesting. We talked about this in the green room. Like, he's older now. He's very clearly slowed down, but at the same time, like, he still has such a good mind for the game, and he's just so technically proficient that. Honestly, he, he doesn't really have too many problems unless he's fighting with the top, top, top tier of the division. And I like Peter Quilly a lot. But like, he, I think it's become readily apparent in his last two fights that, like, he's not he's not that guy. You know what I mean? He's a fun fighter, absolutely. You match him up with some with some guys, you can have some really fun fights, um, especially if they're not, like, the lower end of things or if they're not ranked. But when you're talking to a guy like Benson Henderson – he should fight like a uh, Georgie Karahani, something like that, dude. I feel like that'd be a good fight. I think, yeah, for especially since Georgie's had had a rough run, but um, yeah, that'd be an awesome fight, especially if they when they go back to Dublin, if they want to have that main event or co-main event. That's a solid fight right there. But when it comes to a fight like this, Benson Henderson's a savage, and uh, I'm not surprised about this, what, the one this way. Uh, let me rephrase. I'm not surprised the one how this how this fight went. I think that uh. Yeah, it was always going to go this way. As much as I like Peter Quilly, like, just matchup-wise, this student was really rough for him. And I'd also think that, like, because he beat uh, Patricky, I think it's, what, second Bellator fight? Like, it kind of overshot a lot of expectations for the kid. Um, but, yeah, I mean, at least at least he has awesome walkouts every time, so that's a positive. But I feel like the Coleman event, honestly, dude, was way, way more anticipated and uh, for a variety of reasons. In the end, I don't know if I lived up to the hype in terms of entertainment, but it was a devastating finish. Melvin Manhoff, <laughs> obviously, uh, this is going to be his final fight. We'll talk about him in a minute. Um, but Yol Romero, who, you know, mixed, mixed tides in Bellator to, to a degree. I mean, he lost to Phil Davis in a really boring, bad fight, honestly. Uh, he knocked out Alex Pelosi, but we knew Pelosi was a late replacement, and you know he wasn't even ranked or anything like that. He's taking on a ranked guy, Melvin Manoff, a savage. I mean, and in the end, he just—I mean, he—he <laughs> he murdered him. I mean, like it looked like he fucking killed him, dude. Uh, and then in round three, he gets him down, gets into half guard. And I remember thinking while watching it, I'm like, hmm, this is the same position that he finished Machida from, just elbows from the top, just ruthlessly. And I thought he killed Machida at the time. And he ends up nearly murdering Manhoff in the same exact way. Uh, he gets the third round knockout, puts him out cold with the elbows. Dude, Yel Romero, he's 45. And he, he's, he's from Cuba, so he might be 55. But, <laughs> god damn, he's still so dangerous, man. Especially third round Yoel. I called it last week. I was like, third round finish, man. But even then, I didn't expect it to honestly come in the fashion that it did. Dude, give me your thoughts on his performance. I know that he's, he's talked about going down weight and capturing a belt, maybe he'll stay at 205 and fight for the title there. I think in terms of name value and the rankings-wise, either thing makes sense. Um, what do you think about moving forward for Yola? What do you think about his performance on Friday? I mean, solid performance, man. I mean, he's older and he's still up here. I mean, I mentioned him earlier. I mean, uh, as far as, like, old guys still doing their thing and shit, he's still doing it, man, and he's 
he's doing it and he's finishing fights. That's the thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's not getting these veteran technical decisions. You know, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's doing what he has to do. And when he sees the opportunity and sees it, gets him out of there. As far as the move to, uh, you said the move to, uh, 185? Yeah. He's talking about doing, you know, staying up at 205 or moving down. If you can make the weight and you want to chase that dream, go for it, right? I, 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 he could be Johnny Evelyn, you know? Who knows? I think it's possible. I agree, but I'm going to take a bit of an uh, unpopular opinion here. I mean, I, I think he should to, stay at 205. I, but. I agree. I agree as well. I mean, I think, like, I don't think it would go well for him if he fights, like, a guy like Corey Anderson and, or Nemkov or – Obviously, we saw what happened when he fought Phil Davis. I think those are probably like the top three guys in the division. But, like, dude, like, the Rumble fight, if Rumble ends up coming back, that's right there. I think was, the star power is, is heavier at 205 versus 185. And also, I don't want to see him make that cut again. I mean, the guy's only getting older, and he was having trouble making 185 when he left the UFC. And that was, what, three years ago? I mean, it's just <clears> – <throat> it would not be a good thing for him to try and move down, especially to try and make championship weight and – so on and so forth. I think for Yoel, I'd love to see him stay at 205, uh, especially if he continues putting guys' lights out like he did on Friday. But, you know, there's so many questions around Yoel. We'll see what happens with him. But as far as Melvin Manhoff goes, that was the last fight of his uh, historic career. He decides to call it quits at uh, 46 years old. I believe that's the first – this is a fun fact for you guys. I believe that's the first time in Yoel Romero's career that he's older, uh, younger than somebody, uh, and, and, and opponent-wise. I mean, he's always been the older guy. Uh, Melvin was older, older than him by one year. So there you go. Uh, but anyways, he calls it quits. Just the all, one of the most all time, like, action fighters. I mean, he went to decision five times out of 51 fights. Um, his kickboxing, he had an incredible kickboxing career, which just entertaining is there, uh, entertaining there as well. In terms of Melvin Manhoff, uh, what is the fight you're going to most remember him for? And can you kind of give me your thoughts on him deciding to call it quits? I mean, he was that action guy, dude. You know, you got you got to say it. I mean, the, the dog collar, the dog collar is un, unforgotten. You know what I mean? It's yeah, some of the most entertaining walkouts in in UFC history, and uh, a menace to be reckoned with. You know, uh, uh, thank you for being around and and entertaining us. Just sometimes, even despite your your own well being. You know, I think that was something that he kind of did a lot. Uh, you know, I'm gonna. Uh, he had a fight in one against this uh, Japanese guy's. I can't remember his name. Where he something. I, I I love it because of the shorts. The the his opponent dude. They're literally like tidy whities with like an <laughs> X on the back. And he's doing this like kind of elusive, kind of like a drunken style. His, his opponent is. And then bam, he just hits him with the right and puts him out. Like like early on in the first round. It's, just, <laughs> it's not very action packed, but I do remember seeing it because of the. I saw the highlight on Instagram like a while back. Yeah, I mean, dude, he is, uh, I think that, like, this may, this may be a hot take to some people. I don't think it is whatsoever, but I think he's one of the best fighters to never fight in the UFC. I mean, you gotta think that's a pretty short list, honestly. Like, it's, it's like Fedor, Shinya Aoki, a couple of those homegrown, homegrown Bellator guys. And then there's Gerslav, Melvin. Andrews. You know, yeah. a few guys. Yeah, and then, and then it's, and then it's Melvin. I mean, the guy was a fucking savage. I mean, he beat a lot of a lot of people forget. Like some people think he's just an action guy, but like he was a former cage rage champion. He beat some bad dudes in his prime. Knocked out uh, Evang- Evangelista uh, Santos, Cyborg Santos, uh, which by the way, underrated banger. One of the most underrated fights ever. That was just an absolute war, and they knocked him out back in cage rage. Beat Ian Freeman. Um, he beat Sakuraba, Mark Hunt. I mean, he just Dennis Kang. Tons of banger strategies. He, for his he fought a lot of tough guys, dude. Even if he didn't win, I mean, he fought Robbie Lawler, Tim Kennedy, Gokan Saki. Like, you, you also got to credit that gay guard. Like, yeah, that's the thing though. He was he was willing to fight anybody, anytime, any place. A lot of fighters say that he was actually that dude. Like, <laughs> and any rule set at that too. Kickboxing, you know, MMA. I mean, he did it did it a variety of ways. Damn right he did, man. And uh, in terms of the, the thing I'm going to remember most, I think it's probably going to be that Mark Hunt fight, man. I mean, fighting Mark Hunt up at heavyweight, outweighed by, I don't even, think, I don't even know how much it was. It was eight, I don't remember the exact number, but it was like between 80 and 100 pounds. Like, it was something crazy. And just goes out there and ices Mark Hunt in, like, <laughs> 20 seconds. I mean, it's just something yep. insane. I mean, he was, yep. 
Yeah, and I believe that was like in uh, K1 Dynamite. That shit was just, yeah, man. I mean, there's there's tons of there's tons of other good memories too. If we're, if we're looking for like more recent ones, I didn't watch that fight live. In terms of a fight I watched live, his uh, his war with Alexander Shemenko was dope. Um, two fights with Carbaio was pretty good too, right? Uh, the 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 first one sucked and it was a terrible. It's one of the worst decisions I've ever seen. Uh, uh-huh. But the second fight was entertaining. First second fight was. Um, it ended up going his way, but it was pretty fucking yeah. good. And then the fight was so- the knockout of Asaki Koto. Asaki Koto was like really good in his prime. Nobody talks about him anymore, but uh, yeah, that's a guy. I wonder what happened to him. Honestly, not gonna lie. Like Asaki Koto, I I know that he's in K one these days, but like far as MMA goes, like he fell off the face of the planet. So, um, yeah, man, Melvin Manhoff, incredible career. Probably should have called the quits a little bit before this, but uh, it is what it is, you know. Um, a little before this. <laughs> I mean, hey, he had a little bit of a run, you know, a couple of years ago. Um, not too long ago. Wrong. Yeah. It is what it is. I mean, yeah. but it is what it is. But sadly, anyways. I think like a lot of people will remember him for his low lights rather than his highlights. Sadly, well, I will not. I will remember him. Oh, Giga Chad Josh. I will oh. remember him for the good times. The good times, Angel. But uh, Giga Chad Josh, you love to see. Right. Goddamn right. But uh, God, anyway. someone give Josh a kiss. Oh, fuck off. Anyways, so, um, yeah, man, rest of the card, though, uh, very fun, especially the main card, but what do you think, uh, fights in, ter- in terms of fights you want to talk about? I mean. Uh, man, where do we start? I mean, dude, uh, this is the one that got to me, uh, that's surprising. Carl Moore getting submission over Carl Rexon. You were telling me about this earlier and kind of how it went. I mean, you told me that Rexon had the, the submission early on, and, or not submission, but the, the fit, he had hurt him or tagged him early on. And then mm-hmm. it seemed like he progressively got tired and Carl Moore ended up getting to submission. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, I fucking always mention Carla Brace to always hype him up. I did not expect this. I mean, yeah, I mean, you never know who that next guy will be, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Carl Albertruden was looking really good in the first round. I mean, he almost got the finish. And then Carl Moore just coming back in that second round, getting the submission win. That was, that was awesome to see, especially considering I. I remember correctly, like he had like his like family in the crowd and shit. It's like a really nice moment. But yeah, man, that was a great win by him. That's, that's one um, big Irishman, by the way. Oh, dude, yeah, absolutely. But uh, also in terms of like local fighters, Liam McCourt getting back in the win column, trying to get inch closer towards the title shot. We'll see what happens there. Um, it was an all right fight against Dina Silva. Uh, Pedro Cavallo defeating Mads Brunel. That was a pretty nice fight, man. Uh, Mads Brunel, though. Brutal in that third round. Uh, gassed out terribly. So, yeah, Pedro Cavallo, though, solid win by him. Um, on the undercard, Brett Johns getting back in the win column. Georgia Carhani, who we talked about in the past, uh, we kind of talked about, like, about his slow decline that, like, just keeps on happening. And, uh, taking on Kay Musa, another one, just a brutal performance by him. He just looked very, very slow, ends up losing by decision. Um, we'll see if he's called back one more belt or uh, one more belt or event. We'll see, man, because he's had three fights in a row where he just looked so shot, um, which is which is a damn shame because like in his prime, dude, super fun action guy, former World Series of Fighting champion. I believe he fought for the belt over title, didn't win it, or at least he was in like a couple of those tournaments. So, um, yeah, man, damn shame. But we'll see what happens to the next. But yeah, man, this is, this is a really fun card. I think the the energy. Whenever Bellator goes to Ireland is unlike I anything think they, else. They really made the card for me. The crowd really did. It really got me excited, and and I was like, oh, well, I I I want to be part of this, you know? Like it, it made me feel some type of way. Exactly, and I, this is one of those things like I cannot believe <coughs> the UC has not gone to Ireland in so long. Like I can't remember when was the last time they went to Ireland. It was whenever Conor made event in like 2015, I think. Probably that's probably the last time. Just. Crazy to me that they have not gone back. But, They're like, um, no, we're gonna go to England because you know, fuck again, them, fuck all yeah. the other countries. But I mean, I can't hit on them. It's worked out pretty well. Yeah, it's worked out. Just I'm disappointed about it though. But yeah, I wish they would go back to Ireland. But if shit, if they're not, belts were filling that market. Good. You'd love to see that shit, man. Because uh, that was an awesome card. So I can't wait to see them go back. But Beltor is gonna be back, and they're gonna be back on Saturday. They're gonna be going head to head with the UFC. It's been a while since they've done that, but. In terms of, uh, they're bringing the fire, man. They're, they're, they're bringing their best ever. Uh, Bell Tour 286 from the Long Beach Arena in Long Beach, California. A featherweight title main event. Patricio Pitbull. Kind of unanimously agreed of like top three guys outside the UFC. 
uh, recaptured the Bellator featherweight title in April with a unanimous decision win over AJ McKee. That was a very close fight. Could be taking on Adam Boric. 18-1, and one, one loss to Darion Caldwell back in January 2020. Just got caught in the World Grand Prix uh, via submission. Since then, he's won four in a row. Last time out, beat Matt Burnell in March. I think it's a, it's a lot closer fight than uh, what people are kind of giving it credit for, man. What do you think about this one? Uh, I mean, good matchup. Young Gun on his way up, man. I mean, he's here. It's his opportunity. Just like AJ was here, you know, not too long ago, he's presented here. Funny enough, almost a similar record, right? Pretty, I mean, literally the same right now as it stands. It's going to be different after that night. Could almost, mm-hmm. It could still be matching by the end of it. We, we'll, we'll have to see, right? Yeah. But it is kind of crazy how the, the parallel there, you know? And uh for Pitbull, man, I mean, he's looking to potentially, what is it, move down? Yeah, he said he's going to, his plan is to beat Aaron Pico and to beat Adam Borg to then move down to Bantamweight for another world title. I mean, that's a, that's a, I mean, 135 is a stacked division in Bellator. I mean, it's stacked in, I think, everywhere that has a 135 division. I mean, they all have killers. It's just a fact. Uh, if he does do that, I mean, great for him, right? Uh, but first he has Anna Borch in front of him, and Anna Borch is a no slash man. I mean, there's a reason he's gone to this point. I mean, we know what happened last time, uh, Pitbull had a young, hungry, talented kid in front of him with, uh, a splendid record. Uh, and, one was undefeated. This one is not. It's only one loss, though. And uh, Anna Borch, dude, good stand-up, good on the feet, uh, great jab, pit bull, a lot of advantages, great power, both hands, keep up ending the fight at any moment. Had ground, is you know, is able to do stuff on the ground as well, take it to the ground. I'm a I'm a lean pit bull man, but it's close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at too, man. Um... I want to go ahead and you know what, man? I'm gonna go for it. I've not made a I've not made a an upset pick in a while. I'm gonna go ahead and go Adam Borch, man. Um, I've been very impressed during his last couple of wins. I think the size more than anything might be a problem for him. Uh, for Patricio, I mean, Adam Borch is very big for the weight class. He's nearly six feet tall. Uh, he's coming off with a really really nice series of wins. And I think he's going to go ahead and get the upset win here, man. I, I don't know the odds, but I know that uh, Patricio is probably the favorite. I think he got caught with Darren Caldwell just a couple of years ago. And Darren Caldwell is on a bit of a losing streak these days, but I think most people forget how just how damn good he was for a minute there. Adam Borch just got caught in that one. That's his one loss his career today. I think he goes out there and makes it 19-1 and one and uh, upsets the whole division right there. Gets a win and uh, becomes champion. Turns it on the side. Turns it on his head. And it kind of works out, too, because if, if Patrice is already looking to go down, I mean, might as well just, you know, like... Just, Get rid of the bell real quick. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean... He's so, like, hey, just made it easier for me. Yeah, exactly. But uh former Patricio Pitbull opponent, AJ McKee, making the walk and making the move to 100, 155 pounds. Interesting matchmaking here, because AJ McKee could easily be fine for the belt, but instead he's going to be fighting the unranked Alpha Ginger... Spike Carl. Whoa, whoa, Josh. That's his nickname. I know. You think I just made that shit up? I don't know. No, man. I'm not trying to get canceled, man. That's his nickname. Don't look at me. I mean, the way you the way you hyped it up, man. I was like, whoa, Josh. The solid nickname. You got excited there, bro. Anyways, former USC veteran, super entertaining during a stretch. um, Signed a Bellator last year. um, Is riding a five five win streak. He's not ranked in the division yet, but you know. Probably could be after this one if he wins. Um, in terms of, like, matchmaking, this is kind of weird. But in terms of, like, a fight, we know damn well that Spike Carlisle is going to bring the fight to AJ McKee, man. So what do you think about this one? It's, it's a banger, man. It's a hard fight for AJ, you know. I mean, we were talking about earlier about how it kind of seems like it's it's not really – it doesn't really have a high reward. And the risk uh, – like, uh, what is it? what's the saying? Uh, low uh, Low reward, high risk, you know. Mm-hmm. Is kind of the thing here, but they, they, I had heard, you know, I was listening to something that had offered him another ranked opponent. He didn't take the fight. He wanted, he specifically called for this fight, and it's a hard fight. But I think it's a good way to get to see how his body will look at 155, how mm-hmm. he's going to feel at 155, how he's going to move at 155, how his cardio is at 155. I mean, there's, I mean, he's not just going to be the same guy from 145 to 155. I mean, he might be ten times better. We don't know. We'll have to see, but. I think it's a good testing ground. I'm happy he didn't go straight for like a fucking two feet or whoever at 155. You know, I'm happy that he went with the Spark Carlisle route personally. I know not everybody feels that way, but 
I think it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, like, matchmaking, like I said, it's a bit of a weird one, but if Adrian called for it, maybe he sees something there. And I also think he just wants a bit of, like, he's not really sure where he's at in his career. Like, he's he said that, like, he'd go back down to 145. He's not really committed to the 155 move. I think he just wants to test himself and see how he feels of 155 pounds, and I don't blame him. Um, I think he's going to pick up the win here. I'm sure you're on the same page, but in terms of, like, AJ McKee, man, I mean, him at lightweight, there's so many possibilities. Stand for featherweight, too, so, I mean, we'll see what happens. I hope he sticks around in Bellator. I know that he's going to be free agent, not after this fight, but I think after his next one, he'll be a free agent. So, uh, it's going to get, it's going to get real interesting. Still only 27 years old. One mess up in terms, and even then, if it's a me- in terms of being a mess up, I mean, he, he went the distance with Patricio. It was a very close fight. Arguably could have won. Arguably could have won, excuse me. I think that this is going to be a very good fight here. And I think with the big win here, he's right fucking there, dude. I mean, he's, he's just he's right in the same place he was before. So we'll see what happens. I think he does get that win. Dude, in terms of overall card, though, for Belzer 286, very, very solid, especially the main card. So what fights are you most looking forward to on uh, on Saturday? I mean, we just got to go one down, man. It's one of the most hyped prospects in MMA history. Aaron Pico against Jeremy Kennedy. I mean, that's a banger of a fight right there. Hard to fight for Jeremy Kennedy, though. I think Aaron is going to – I think he's going to have a fun time in this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think Jeremy Kennedy is a solid talent. I've, I've kind of talked before about it. I thought it was bullshit. He got cut from the UFC, and he had a solid run in PFL as well. He's having a good run in Bellator now. But I truly believe that Aaron Pico is the future. I mean, we got to remember, this kid's only 26. He was 21 he, when it, the angel, he was our age when he made his uh, Bellator debut. And he's a super prospect. And I think, you know, he started four and three. Uh, but even then, like in his fifth fight, you know, he, he knocked out like Leandro Higo, who's like a former like Bellator title challenger. So like he was already legit then. But then he had to take a couple steps back. But dude, right now he's looking, I don't want to say unbeatable, but like, God damn, does he look good, dude. I mean, he's, he's what, won six fights in a row. He hasn't even been challenged in a single one of those. His last fight against Adley Edwards was just a brutal beat down. And Jeremy Kennedy's very, very good, but I think Aaron Pico might be too much for him. But regardless, I'm very excited to see what happens next. I think Aaron Pico, this kid is is still the future. That's what I think, man. I think this kid's going to be a champion sooner rather than later. later. But, yeah, I'm very excited for that fight. In my opinion, best fight on the card, honestly. But, there's another fight on the main card. Juan Trilletta, Enrique, Bar- Enrique Barzola at bantamweight. Banger right there, man. Um, Juan Trilletta really needs a win. He's lost uh, two fights in a row. Um, obviously lost the title to Pettis and then lost to the Grand Prix. Uh, Enrique Barzola's coming off that loss to Magomed Magomedov. No shame in that one. Uh, after Before that, he had won two fights in a row. So that should be a really fun fight between two guys. You need to get ba- uh, back on the right track at 135. Um, in terms of the undercard, there's a couple of good names to watch for. I'd say the number one guy is Max Roshkov, who I think we there talked we about <laughs> last week. Yeah, I mean this kid. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, I think I said this, said it last week, but I thought it was so fucked up that they cut this kid. Um, who took the fight like one week notice, and he ultimately he quit on the stool. But there's nothing wrong with with doing that when you're outmatched. I think. Um, but still, he's only 28. He's seven and one. He's won two fights in a row. He's taking on Mike Hamill on the prelims. I think Max Roshkoff is is uh, going to be a future contender at Bellator. I have no problem saying that. He's a good team around him, good mindset, and I'm very excited to see what happens with him in the future. Uh, any other fights or any other names you're going to talk about on this one? I mean, I always got to send him out, Josh. Uh, Lance Gibson Jr., oh, yep. son of Lance Gibson Sr. Yep. Uh, back on the card. They're building him up slowly, man. Obviously, got an opponent change on here. Fighting win Dominic Clark fifteen to twelve, and then another guy that I like a lot. Hopefully, and I, I'm pretty sure he made weight. JJ Wilson back mm-hmm. against uh, Vladimir Tokov. So an interesting fight there. One against the Russian. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, man, this is a very solid card. I, I'm very, very excited for this one. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, man. Um, but yeah, that's all we got in terms of MMA and like previewing and recapping. We do have some news to go over. And uh, first up on the agenda, Bo Nickel. Bo Nickel, who we talked about when he made his Contender Series debut. They, you know, Dana did the whole, 
almost Greg Hardy esque. Like, you know, you got to get one more. You know, like <laughs> you got, we got to see you do one more fight. And um, so they did. They had him fight. I believe the kid's name was Donovan Beard. And eight and one, eight and one to his credits. Um, good guy. But uh. Yeah, man. I mean, let's be honest. We knew it was gonna happen. I mean, no. Bro, offense. I mean, I, I, yeah. I actually had. I was like, I'm curious to see if he's gonna, is gonna go down another round. Like, I want to see if anything happens. I did not expect it to. I mean, Josh, with just the action itself, it was seconds. Mm-hmm. I'm not even talking about like time until an exchange. I'm talking about like once he hit him to the ground, it was seconds. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll put it like this. Given Donovan Beard's talent and his record, I did expect it to make it past the first minute, but that did not happen. <laughs> um, I mean, it wasn't even close, man. Um, ultimately knocks him down. I couldn't really tell if it was a knockdown or if it was just like a slip, but anyways, go through that. dude. He knocked him down, bro. He, that punch had some fucking power behind it. He looked like he was. Yeah, but it looked like he, he, he grabbed the leg at the same time. I, but I couldn't really tell. But regardless. He did. He, he threw the punch and grabbed the leg. I mean, he, he went down with it. I mean, it, yeah. just, it was beautiful technique. Fair enough, fair enough. But anyways, he ends up getting the submission triangle choke 52 seconds in. Dude, I saw somebody uh, made a, a compilation video of, like, Bo Nichols' entire MMA career. And they're like, yes, this is this video is only two minutes and 30 seconds long. And he's had three fights. So, um, yeah, dude. That's guys, still two minutes, though, damn. Yeah, he's a savage, though. But, um, yeah, he finally gets UFC contract, which we expected. We knew that was going to happen. In terms of his future career prospects, he gets on the mic, and he calls out Hamzat Chemaev <laughs> or Logan Paul. That's what he said. He, gives, he said, give wow. me either one. Um, the other one was obviously a joke. But, yeah, man, in terms of Bo Nickel, he seems to actually want the, the fast rise. I don't know if that's a wise move. In terms of Bo Nickel's next career steps – if you're, if you see for some reason they come to you like, Angel, we know that you're the smartest man in MMA. You know, like, we, we want you to match make for Bo Nichols next fight. What do you do? Do you have a name in mind? Do you, or even, not even just a name in mind. Would you, what are you, what are you pushing him for? Top five, top 10, top 15, top 50? I mean, what, what do you think should be next for him? I, I mean, I, I think you still need to like see what, what the level is. You know, I, I know it, it's very clear. Hey, yeah, he's beat these guys quick, but. Give him a guy, I mean, it depends. If you really want to push him, give him a guy outside of the top 50, like a top 30 guy, you know? Mm. And see what happens. Especially at 85, I mean, he could get, I mean, it's not going to take long, you know what I mean? It really isn't. And I'm curious to see how he does against some guys like, you know, like a, a, you know, Kelvin, you know, Nazarene Imanov, I mean, a, you know, what is it? Because he's fighting at 85, right? Yeah, correct. I mean, there's a lot of tough fights there, dude. Marvin Vittori at some point in the future. Shit, when he gets there, Robert Whitaker. I mean, oh, obviously, Jesus. I mean, we're talking way ahead, but it's just like, you know, yeah. you, I feel like you need to build him up. You know, he's young and it's still only you know, three fights. Unless he's, unless he's that guy, Josh. Unless we, he goes into his next fight and fights a guy like, like maybe a Brad Tavares and does the same thing he did there, then you gotta be, you gotta be thinking about pushing it then. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Yeah, man, I think that um, I think you, you got it right on the money. I see a lot of people are wanting like, oh man, he he will fuck up Hamza right now. I'm like, dude, he will shit on Izzy, dude. Dude, you guys gotta chill out, though. <laughs> like, you got, dude, he's got style bum. on Izzy, dude. dude. He's gonna dude, take I him down. The amount, of, the amount of people I saw like being like, oh, you dude, Nickel would literally fuck up Robert Whitaker right now. I'm like, you guys are bugging, dude. Like, you guys are fucking crazy. I love Bo Nickel. In in two three years, let's have that conversation. The guy is three fights into his career, and he has not fought anybody of, of like, a top caliber. Not even close. And that's no offense to Donovan Beard or, or uh, the other kid that he fought before him. Um, that's no offense. That's just reality. Like, those guys are not top. They're not in the UFC for a reason. But I think for his career, a lot of people are like, well, we got to give him top five guy, a top ten guy, maybe even Hamzat first. I'm like, no, let's chill the fuck out. Like, let's, let's chill out, dude. This kid has less than three minutes of cage time. Let's give him a top 30 guy, a top 35 guy. There's no shame in giving him a slow rise. Maybe not even a slow rise. Top 30, then top 20, then top 15, top 10, top 5. Like, five fights, and boom, he's there for a title. That's very simple. We do not have to fast-track this kid and fuck up his career. There's no reason for that. I think Dana's learned. Honestly, I really think he has. Like, there are some guys that demand a fast rise, and Bo Nickel could be that guy, 
But there's never been a time where they sign somebody with three fights and they throw them to I mean, Hamzat or a top three guy. I mean, is, I just, is, is it, is it possible? I mean, do you, do you see, and obviously this is very early on, do you, could you see Bo Nickel doing something crazy like, uh, be going out there and beating two guys real quick, uh, like in near the top 15, if not outside the top 15, or maybe one guy in the top 15, one guy outside, and it's like, oh shit. This is the real deal. I think if he goes out and he beats a, uh, like, I think if he does that scenario like you're saying, he'd get a top three guy. Who would you like him to see fight? Because he's obviously in the UFC now. Outside of the 185, guy, outside of the rankings, who's not in the 185, who would you like him to see, would you like him to see fight? Well, we just talked about it. Um, maybe the loser of Brendan Allen versus Christoph Jocko. Okay, those, those are some hard Both fights. of those guys are names. Neither one is ranked. And I'd say the winner, but the winner might be ranked. I don't want to see him fight a ranked guy yet. Mm-hmm. I think the loser of that matchup makes a lot of sense. But even then, I'm just spitballing here. I mean, it could, it could be anybody. But I think the timeline works for that. I mean, it could be the winner for all I give a shit. But, like, it could... Damn, um, gosh, okay. <laughs> I'm just... Yeah, I'm, I, was, I was just backtracking. It could be either guy. But the point is that, like, the the timing works out really well with that fight. Like, they're both fighting right around the same time, so... And he, and he wants to fight again. Yeah, I mean, he said he wants to be ready by December. So... I mean, throw him on one of those end of the year cards. You see, loves doing those end of the year cards. So, so we'll see what happens. Um, no, I, I do, don't this know. Guy's, I think he's he's going to get on a big pay. I feel like he's going to get on a pay per view, dude. That's yeah. what I think. I think I think they're going to throw him on that end of the year pay per view in December. You know, still potential Jones question mark. Obviously, it's quiet down at this point, but you never know. Yeah, I mean, just taking a look at, at the division. I mean, they've got. <laughs> So there's a there's a ranking MMA dot com because I try to look up the UC's website. UC doesn't even have the full. I wish they did. Cross. That's so I wish stupid. They, I wish they did. I can't believe it. No. I mean, I think there's a couple of good names for him. I think they can give him to Ugly Man Joe Holmes. I think that'd be a fun fight. Um, I think. I hope they don't do some shit. Like I hope they don't like throw him like Nick Diaz or something. Like I hope they don't do anything like that. No, 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 no. Well, the UC loves doing that. They try to. They try to do. They tried to throw both Diaz brothers at Jemayev, so, I mean, um, I mean, Roman Kapilov might be interested. Abdul Hazak El Hassan, I think, I, it was the name I saw. That, 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 that's a good one. That's a good one, I think. He's dangerous. Julian Marquez, potentially. Yep. He's, he's, Andre he's, Petrovsky. I mean, there's so many names. Andre, that'd be a good fight. That's what I think, too. 8-1, and one, undefeated in the UFC. Has some risk of capabilities, not the same pedigree, but MMA-wise. Yeah, I think I think if we're gonna narrow it down, I think that's a good fight. Is it lower record? You know. Yeah, I think Andre Petrovsky. That's a good makes one. Josh, good call. Yeah, I think that'd be the one to make. Honestly, either Andre or Abdul or Joseph Holmes. I think I'm a big fan of Ugly Ugly Man Joe. I'm a big fan of that guy. So we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I think any one of those three fights makes sense. And then also, like I mentioned, like. Possible and either the loser of this this fight between Allen and uh, Jocko makes sense, but um, some hard yeah, fights, man. Hard yeah. some hard fights for your what is it fourth fifth MMA fight? That's yeah, fun. but the reality is that this kid is never gonna he was never gonna get like a who's the worst guy at 185 right now? Like I can't even think of. I mean, the worst ranked guy is probably like no offense, Calvin. No, yeah, but not even rankings wise. I mean, like worst guy overall, like <laughs> uh, uh, someone old. I mean, it has to be someone old. I don't know who's old in the division. Yeah, I don't know, but no yeah, disrespect. He, yeah, he's gonna get a good guy. He's gonna get a good guy, but hopefully out of the rankings. And I hope they they take I, the UFC can match make well when they choose to. And I think they're gonna choose to do that here. So, anyways, man, very excited for Bo Nichols UFC future. But now we gotta bounce back to Bellator real quick. Um, Bellator, which has a light heavyweight Grand Prix. Ending in November, a bantamweight Grand Prix scheduled to end in next March. They have narrowed down their next division, which they're going to do Grand Prix, which, by the way, uh, best thing Beltor does by a mile, in my opinion. They've had some really bad luck with their last two. The bantamweight Grand Prix ravaged by injuries. I mean, Jesus Christ. But, hey, still some solid fights out of it. Light hey, man, Grand Prix. But, I mean, it, was, it was a great event, though. I mean, there it is. Yeah. It, it, well, especially because, I mean, that fight with Jumaga Medov and fucking, um, I can't think of his name right now. Rufon Stotts. Oh, Stotts, yeah. Yeah. Um, they, there's a couple of really good guys still in that tournament, so. I mean, Pashi Bears, Magomed, Magomed, Rufion versus uh, Sabatella, which is Magomed down, and obviously the finals of whatever we get. Exactly, exactly. So there's, there's still good good guys in there, but 
The referees are always good. Let's just be honest. Yeah. So Scott Coker announced yesterday on the MMA Hour that lightweight is going to be their next Grand Prix, which Oof. that's they, going to be. They they they, they picked up yeah. a few guys, man, and some guys have built themselves. That's uh, wow. The guy who comes out of that dude is, uh, you know, UFC or not, dude, up there. And yeah. he did not announce the full the full cast for it, obviously, but he not did. Me, Josh, and- let's. We know who's going to be in. Man. Yeah, and he, and he went ahead and well, he threw some names out there, and I reported on this from BJPen.com, greatest MMA site on the the planet. Uh, what, what is that? One more time, Josh. I'm sorry. BJPen.com. If you want to listen to our one podcast, one more time, real it's slow. BJPen.com, like the former UFC champion, owned by the former UFC champion, the goat. Um, all, Thank the, you, Josh. The, the the podcast, by the way, if you guys want, just scraps, hosted by, by my boy Cole Shelton. Very good. It's available on Spotify. Um. Very good, solid podcast. Best MMA team on the planet. But anyways, when Aaron Ford on there, apparently he, he threw out a couple of the names which are likely to be in it. Um, those names being Tafik Musafayev, Usman Nurmagomedov, Pachiki Pitbull, Benson Henderson, Peter Quealy. Uh, yeah, those are, those are the names that he threw out. So, dude, god damn, that's going to be a hell of a tournament, dude. And there's still other guys they could throw in there. Hey, you know, like Patricio said, he wants to move down to 135. Maybe he could be enticed for a little payday. To move up to 155, where he's a former champion, you know. Um, maybe there's a this free agent, which we'll be talking about in a couple minutes. Maybe he wants to come back. Oh, shit. I didn't even think about that, dude. Yeah, I mean, by the way, that's the best time for him to be a free agent because there's so much, like, potential for him right now. But um, in terms of, like, name value and getting paid. So, yeah, man. And Bellator, what do you think about them? Is this the right call for lightweight? Because I really do think it is. I think it's the best division they could have used for this right now. Yeah, I mean, no disrespect to the current champ, but let's be honest, Josh, that title run was, you know, that didn't last very long, I think, when, when the right guys got in those positions. And this is really going to show who's the best at lightweight. And what are the best lightweights in the world, dude? Because, honestly, they got some really, really good guys. You know? Yeah, yeah, they do. I mean, he, he Scott Cooper went and said, like, I think the lightweight division is the best it's ever been. I don't know if I agree with that, but, like, well, it's, it's the best. Close. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, it's close, but for, for Bellator, you know, it's pretty, fuck, it's pretty solid, Josh. Yeah, I mean, like, in terms of, like, the depth of the division is the big thing, because, like, I, I guess it's been more yeah. top heavy with, during that era yeah. of, like, Michael Chandler and Eddie Alvarez and, um, Will Brooks and guys like that, like, that was more top heavy, but the like in terms of the depth of the division right now, like I mean the top eight guys are pretty solid though. The top ten guys are pretty solid. Yeah, you're goddamn right. So um yeah, man. Gonna be a hell of a show next year. Can't wait for that one. Beltor has some momentum, man. Feels like feels like Beltor was kinda of stagnant for a while there. I feel like they've got some momentum right now, and we'll see what they do with it. But in terms of a uh, a company that has Shit, I don't know if momentum's the word, but they're making some moves. Uh, PFL, who we t- we talk about from time to time. We can't really talk about them in a preview or recap aspect because they do their shows at weird times. Um, fuck me, you know. Like I'd love to talk about them, but like sometimes those be Wednesday shows, Thursday shows, whatever. Like, hey man, cool. they're they're they got some good events going on. I I, I, I like. I think the only thing, the only issue with them is their concept of the whole uh, like season and point thing, but. I mean, they're they're in a pretty solid place. They are, they are, and I agree with that. Um, but they are going to make the bold decision, and I don't agree with it. And I'll talk about why in a minute. But uh, PFL, which they they talked about wanting to experiment with pay per view for a while now, and their main target, from what I've heard, was they wanted to get Chris Cyborg on board for a a fight with Kayla Harrison. They were going to put that on pay per view. That'll probably do pretty well, honestly. That's that's an excellent fight, and if they build the undercard well, that could be a, a big pay per view. Bellator's done pay per views in the past. They both did around a hundred thousand, which is apparently like the break even point, from my understanding, for pay per view is around a hundred thousand. Um, PFL is going to do pay per view. They're going to have Kayla Harrison, no Chris Cyborg though. Uh, it's going to be Kayla Harrison versus Larissa Pachenko, the trilogy, which is honestly an excellent fight. Um. They're going to do that on pay-per-view for the PFL Championships on November 25th. First time PFL is doing pay-per-view. As far as the fight card goes, outside of the headliner, Kayla Harrison, Lucy Pachinko, like I mentioned, they have all the world title fights. They also have a couple of uh, special, I believe it's, they call them like showcase fights, uh, which include Shane Burgos versus Marlon Marias, two uh, former UFC guys who are now some of their big signings. Uh, they also got Jeremy Stevens on the prelims. We don't know the price 
the price point for this one. Um, not yet, I, anyway. I think that's very important, by the way, for for them, because if it's like UFC price, it's not going to do well. Yeah, it's that that would be that would be brutal. But um, in terms of a fight card, man, I mean, it's, what do you think about, solid. Thinking about the decision? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, it, it's solid. I think it's good. Pay per view, scary, right? I mean, I'll put it like this. Do I think the main card is pay-per-view caliber? I think so. You know, pretty close. As, as best as they could do, you know what I mean? I mean, especially with the stakes and everything on the line, yeah. I mean, if there's a time for them to do the pay-per-view throughout the year, I mean, this this is the time when they're doing all the championship fights and, and, the, and obviously all the monies to be handed out and then the showcase fights and everything. I mean, it's, it's going to be a great night of MMA. I mean, if you want MMA, that's going to be a good night. I think it'll be definitely worth your money. I just think as far as... You know, for everybody, not everybody who follows, I mean, it, it, people might not want to spend that kind of money if it's up there in price and it's, it does not reasonable for them, but I mean, I'll tell you what, I mean, if it's whatever they call it, you know, the cost of what it is to get a UFC pay review, that's going to be a hard sell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think for, shit, 40 bucks? Yep, yep, I agree. I mean, that's that's what I was thinking, Thirty nine ninety nine something around there. Yeah, and then, I mean, shit, like, that'd be nice, honestly. But I think anything above that is going to be a tough sell. You know what I mean? Especially if it's UFC price. Which I don't even remember, dude, because we split it. What's the price of these pay per views now? Like, I mean, it's, it's like damn near 80 bucks. That's what I thought. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So if they go that way, it's the over under on pay per view buys is going to be 50. Not 50,000, just 50. But if they go like 40 bucks, maybe even 49.99, like, that, that'd not be bad. Especially or some weird like, shit like 40. Yeah, like, did you say 44.99? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 40, yeah, like 45 bucks. You know what I mean? Like that'd be that'd be fine, you know. But if what if they're giga chads, they're like, okay, guys, ten bucks. <laughs> nah, oh my god, that. that'd be incredible. It's ESPN. Like, they're not gonna do that. They're, no, they're not. But like those greedy fucks. If they do anything below forty, I'd be shocked. But like if they throw like thirty bucks out there, shit, dude, that's come on. That's smart. Like, that's smart. Yeah, like that'd be solid. I think it's smart to lowball it, honestly. Well, when it, when Invicta started, before Invicta was on a UFC fight pass, and before they were on like. Other like television stuff, they they had they had they had twenty buck pay per views, which I thought was pretty solid at the time. Like um, but yeah, man, in terms of like PFL, like the card's solid. That's not a problem. Like they got all their champions, and there's Names. a lot of former, yeah, they got former Stevie Ray, Olivia Obama CA, uh, Kayla Harrison, obviously Bubba Jenkins, Shane Burgos, Marlon Marais, Jimmy Stevens is back, Omar Mudoff is back, um. Very, very solid in terms of names. It's now, strong, dude. It's it's very strong. Like, you take – I mean, Josh, let's be honest. For a PFL, it's here at UFC with all UFC branding. I mean, pretty – you can sell that pretty fucking well. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, well, and I, I, the thing I'm a little bit surprised about, which I think – I think he could make his way on here. Um, actually, I think we should just talk about this in conjunction because I could see this guy being a late addition. Eddie Alvarez is a free agent. And you know what I think the smart move is, dude? I think if I had to pick where Eddie Alvarez ends up, and he says he's open to UFC, Bellator, he's open to everything, right? And he's 38 years old. He just ended his one stint. He asked for his release. He went one, two, and one there. I think he's going to go to PFL. I think he's going to. I think that makes a lot of sense where he's at right now. See, and Here's my prediction. Now, hold on. Let me, fin- let me finish, Angel. Let me fucking finish. I know. I know. I think, I think he heads to PFL, and here's my prediction. I think it's... This, this card we got right now, going down in late November, and then it's Eddie Alvarez versus uh, Showtime Pettis 2, also added to the card. Oh, okay. Because they got to get name value on there. This card is solid right now, but in terms of, like, huge name value, not a lot there. I was surprised yeah. Pettis wasn't already booked for this, because they got, like, Jeremy Stevens on the undercard. They got a couple of former UFC guys. But like, I mean, granted, though, Pettis fought how many times this year for them? Uh, well, I mean... It, it was at least normal? three Four? for... Or three or was four? It, it was at least three, right, for the 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 points, right, or four, plus what he did in the actual tournament format, which is one more, because I know he lost, I'm pretty sure he lost the first round against Stevie Ray. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he fought like four times, five times, I don't know, a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, still, though, I mean, he fought like the normal amount for the season, same as all the people on the card, though. Oh, true, true, but still, I mean, on the potty, man. Yeah, I mean, fair enough, but, um... Yeah, I mean, like I said, that's my that's my prediction. I think Eddie Alvarez. I mean, where do you think he ends up? Honestly? I mean, I think I think there's doors everywhere. You know, PFL is an option. I think uh, obviously 
Bellator or return of Bellator is always possible. Maybe with the UFC ban, run it back with Connor one more time. Maybe RDA, Chandler. He's there. Don't make money, you know? Yeah, but I think the UFC, it's very rare for somebody to leave the UFC and the UFC, like, just take that real well. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, you know, that's, that's true as well. But, I mean, hey, man, take advantage of him, you know? It's, not, mm-hmm. it's true. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, I think that that's where he's probably going to end up, and I think he'll probably make his way on that PFL pay-per-view, because they need some more name value. See, the thing is, though, I don't know if he'll compete. Will he compete during the season, or do you think he just do, like, showcase matches? I think that he, they're just going to do show. I think probably just do showcase matches, because that's what uh, a lot of their bigger stars have said now. They're like, Kayla Harrison said, she's like, yeah, I'm done. Like, I'm done doing the tournament thing, like, after this one. So, um, yeah, and... To be completely honest with you, I think it's probably run its course. Like, I, whenever PFL first came around, and I enjoy PFL still, but I think when they first came around, they had a lot more momentum in terms of, like, using the tournament because they had a gimmick. But now they're an established promotion. They have that done. If they want to do, a, like, a tournament once a year with one weight class, kind of similar to Bellator, that'd be one thing. But, like, I think some of their bigger stars are probably like, all right, I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm pretty sure Pettis is probably going to be done doing tournaments, too. Because, yeah. like, some of those weight cuts, 155, now that he's getting older, probably kill him. I think Eddie Allard is going to be the same case. Kayla Harrison already said she's done. I mean, that's where I think we're at. So um, we'll see what happens, though. I mean, I think PFL is a really weird place where they have so much money, and they have, like, people don't realize, like, the investors PFL has is, like, insane. They have so much money, but, like, nobody watches them. So, <laughs> yeah, they're in a and, weird place. And though. they have great quality. Their production is good. They got good commentary. They, they really have a, a very high ceiling. I, I think they, they need to just push it and change the concept, man. I think the, the tournament thing is, can only take them so far. And it's fun. Don't get me wrong. It's fun. Mm-hmm. But, it's, but it's just the way you do it. I think if they just go straight back to how it was with the World Series of Fighting and they were just promoting fights, I mean, they had, I mean, they had Justin Gaethje, Marlon Marais back then. And I mean, a bunch of other guys I can't name off the top of my head. Yeah. Who were entertaining. I mean, they had a – was it Nick Newell? I mean, he fought Justin Gaethje. Oh, yeah, you're kind of right there, Nick Newell. He's yeah. a savage in World Series of Fight. I mean, yeah, exactly. A little deep cut there, but yeah. And, uh, by the way, one thing I have heard, somebody who may get added to this card, uh, another boost in name value, um, is uh, Clarissa Shields if mm-hmm. she gets through Savannah Marshall. Oh, so, wow. um she said she wants to make it on to this year card, end of the year card, so we'll see what happens. No, but, uh, Josh, they're going to sign Anderson Silva. No, I don't think. I think. <laughs> That's a joke. I think there's zero chance Anderson ends up in uh, in PFL. Oh yeah, what MMA in general? I think. Yeah. Just, uh, well, I mean, uh, we'll talk about him. We're actually about to talk well, about him right now. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, because I uh, heard about this earlier today, by the way. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So, um, in terms of Anderson Silva, we obviously know he's going to be fighting. Jake, the problem child, Paul, on pay-per-view, showtime. Um, in almost 30 days. Almost 30 days. Coming up quick. But uh, he said he wants to He said he said wants to fight for two more years. He wants to retire at the age of 49 because he thinks 50 I don't know, I guess that's, I don't know, that's his choice, whatever. I think 50 would be a nice round number, but um, he's choosing 49. He wants to be, retire at 49. And he said he wants to fight in MMA uh, couple, one or two more times and call it quits in Japan. Well, there's only a couple of possibilities if that's the case. And one of those possibilities is Bellator. And Scott Cooker confirmed earlier this month, and he talk, he's been talking about it recently. He's like, yeah, like, Anderson's doing the thing with Showtime. We're on Showtime. We've actually talked to them in the past about signing to Bellator. And the fight that they want to book is a old-school, pride-esque super fight between Fedor Emelianenko and Anderson Silva. That'd be Soccer favorite. kicks. Head that would be stops. that would be every Fedor. steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Are you implying that Fedor and Anderson would not be clean for this? Uh, I dude, if they dude, honestly, if they wanted to take all the TRT they wanted, I could give two fucks. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't care either. <clears throat> yeah, but anyways, man, um, that's their goal. Is they're gonna try and do. Fedor versus Anderson at some point in 2023. Scott Curtis said he's now for They said, like, weight may be a bit of a problem, but I'm sure they can find a solution. 205. Yeah. Fedor, I mean, Fedor is not a big heavyweight. Or 210. I mean, Fedor weighed. Uh, Catch weight. What? Fuck it. Yeah. You're yeah. Right. There's, they can do anything they want, honestly, especially if they're fighting in Japan. There's literally no athletic commission. So, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure they'll, they'll figure something out. I mean, dude. they could like, do open weight if they really wanted to, too. Yeah, they could. They could do that, too. I mean, they have so many options. And I love this fight, dude. I actually do. I think, like, in terms of Fedor and his career, like, it's so tough to find an opponent because it's like... How how close are they in age? Uh, That's a good ask question. Hold on. A, this is actually a very important thing to me. I They're within two years apart. Okay, so let me see. I know that Anderson's 47, I think. Anderson's 47. Fedor's 46. I love that. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah that's... Make make it happen. Yeah. Make, and, make it happen. They're both legends. Their chins are both been cracked. They, they're, they, they deserve this, actually. Yeah, they do. They do. And in terms of being a fight, it's way more competitive now than it would ever be because they're both way older. Yeah. Um, that sounds... Could you, I mean, Josh, I mean... Can you even imagine saying this back in the day, Fedor versus Anderson Silva? No, but also though it'd be it'd be kind of like an old school Pride Super Fight. Cause whenever you know Fedor was reigning up at heavyweight, Anderson was a title contender back down at what one eighty five. Wouldn't that be epic, dude? In the in the ring and then like Pride style walkouts and it, well, that's the best outcome, right? Because you got these two guys who are both older, they're past their prime. Anderson, first part, is turning back the clock, and Fedor did that in his last fight by knocking out Tim Johnson. So, I mean, it's 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 the hype. I mean, you could sell me on it very. Well. I'm getting hyped talking about it right that's now. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, make it at, happen. At first glance, it's like, oh, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But you got to remember where these guys come from. Like, they're both guys who are game as fuck, brought up in the same era, could have easily have fought in back in Pride by the back in the day, just by. Sure, coincidence, they didn't, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, do it in Japan, it, possibly double retirement. If Anderson Anderson may not call it quits, but Fedor wants to. Like, he's been ready. He was ready to retire earlier this year. Because they, apparently they're going to do a fight in um, the Red Square in, yep. in Russia. But due yeah. to, you know, <laughs> political <laughs> things. Due, due to Putin wanting to literally end the world, like, they decided to call it off. So, um <laughs> Holy shit, I, I really hope Fader doesn't get drafted. That just occurred to me. That could happen. Nah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, they just drafted Nikolai Valuev. Really? Right now, yeah. I just saw an article right now. You know, the seven-foot heavyweight, former champion, fought David Hay at yeah. Holyfield? Yeah, he just got drafted. So, Jesus, fuck, I hope that doesn't happen. But um, anyways, um, yeah, man, if, if, if Fedor is just talking about no, Fedor, 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 Fedor knows Putin, dude. Let's be honest. Like, this, this is really going to happen. I mean, it could, though. I, I, they, I think you overestimate how much Putin cares about people, um, but even people he likes. So who knows? And, anyways, man. Uh, best case scenario, I think Fatal versus Anderson is the, the fight to make in 2023, regardless if he beats Jake Paul or not. Honestly, I think it doesn't lose any. Even if Anderson gets murked by Jake Paul, which I do not think will happen, I think it loses zero luster. Honestly, but that's just my opinion. That but. sounds so fun, dude. You got me so excited for that. I know. I heard about it earlier today, but us us talking about it actually like put excitement within me. Yeah, one hundred percent. It is. It lit a fire in me, Josh. It, it lit a fire in you, dude. I think it's the fight to make. But, anyways, man, uh, that's all I got in terms of co- uh, in terms of uh, topics for this week. So, is there anything else we talk about before we close out? Nothing else, man. I mean, I'm just I'm excited. I'm I'm happy that MMA's back, Josh. And I mean, the pay per view for next month, Josh. I mean, it's. One of the greatest pay-per-views I think we'll ever see on paper and hopefully how it plays out. Yeah, and that's a – I don't forget – I can't remember. Is that fight happening earlier in the day because it's in Abu Dhabi or not? It has, it has to be. It has to be. There's no way it isn't just because of the time. A, li- a little bit earlier. I think they'll try to make it as time-friendly as they can. Let me but look I mean, that shit, up. Cause... You remember Habib Gaethje was like at what, like 2 o'clock? Yeah, Habib Gaethje fought at 2 o'clock. Uh, Glover Teixeira fought at like 4 o'clock our time. I mean – Hey, that was a fucking banger of a card, the best card of the year, in my opinion. But that year, yeah, I agree. I mean, this this is. I mean, I'm, oh, I think shit, this card. Angel, we got it is one p.m. CDT, which would be that would be. Wait a minute, why did it, it translate the opposite way? Jesus Christ! <laughs> I believe that would be like one p.m. our time. Mm-hmm. So. Main card? Yep. Oh, so it'll go pretty. I'll run to like five then. Yeah, that'll be that'll be yeah, one PM our time. So yeah, um interesting decision there. Um but anyways, man. We'll post to five, like four or whatever will be, who knows. Yeah, exactly. So that'll that'll be fun. Uh like you said, dude, arguably great pay-per-view all time. 
we're I'm so psyched for that one. But anyways, man, um, I believe that's all we got for this show. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm at Josh Evanoff on Twitter. He's at Andrew Tigger underscore oh one at Courtside Sound for all things related to the show. If you guys enjoyed, peace and butt grease. Mouse click. <laughs>